We begin tonight with the passing of a well-known Rhode Islander. Good evening, I'm Mike Montecalvo. After a valiant four-year fight with an aggressive form of brain cancer, Nick Carty has passed away. Eyewitness News reporter Caroline Goggin joins us now live in studio with a look at the life and legacy Nick leaves behind. Caroline? Well, Mike, what do you do with success? Do you bask in it or do you share it? For the Cardi brothers, it was always the latter. They've spent years making their mark in southern New England, supporting the charitable organizations that cross every corner of this state. Tonight, we remember the oldest member of Nairobi and the legacy of service he now leaves behind. If you take a drive anywhere in Rhode Island, you can't make it too far without seeing their name. As successful as they were, they never forgot their roots and their hardworking family. Three brothers, Nick, Ron, and Pete, always in age order. The Cardis came from humble beginnings, but together they worked to expand their father's business, from a small store in Knightsville to a furniture giant in southern New England. The stories they tell on, on the TV about their dad saying the family meal was the best time of the day is all true. Um, so he never lost touch with the ordinary folks like us. So that was the magic of Nick Carty. On Friday, that magic faded away as Nick Carty passed away at the age of 71 after a difficult four year battle with brain cancer. You know, this was a tough disease that he had for many years, but uh, he, he was relentless in, his, in his, his fight to live. Father Robert Marciano says Nick was a good friend of his. He saw him just a few weeks ago and anointed him in the sacrament of the sick. The last few weeks were a grace that uh, people could actually visit with him and, and say their goodbyes. Yeah. There are many goodbyes to say when you make the kind of impact Nick did. One of the faces of the Cardi's franchise, he and his brothers never forgot to pay it forward. Many organizations in the area have benefited from their generosity. From the Ronald McDonald House to the Alzheimer's Association, and Meeting Street. Nick attended every event we had, whether it be Halloween, reading to our children, our all-state event at um, the Coast Guard House, and of course the telethon. Bernadine Sadwin is the Director of Development at Meeting Street, so she saw Nick quite a bit. She says he was a pillar of the school and a friend to its students. The, the kids love it. They love when they come in because they recognize them on TV. Um, they, you know, they'll run right up without even hesitancy and just give them a hug. And to see what goes on here is just heartwarming. Sadwin says that friendship won't only be missed at Meeting Street, but in organizations and communities throughout Southern New England. You know, there are those of us who preach the gospel and there are those who live the gospel, and, and Nick did. He was uh, so good to so many people. Nick's funeral mass is set for next Saturday at St. Mark's Church in Cranston. I'm Caroline Goggin, Eyewitness News.